elect a new pope in the wake of Pope Benedict's surprise decision to resign at the end of this month. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel is in Vatican City. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Matt. The reaction here in St. Peter's Square to what the Pope has done has been overwhelmingly positive, with people calling it an act of humility and courage to make way for a younger man. 24 hours later, there's still shock in the Vatican City. Shock, disappointed, sad. This morning, Roman Catholics, tourists, and even some church officials wondered if this can be a moment to revitalize the church after Pope Benedict XVI's unexpected decision to step down. Personally, I didn't agree with a lot of the things that he believed and preached. I really hope this will kind of bring change from the church. In making his announcement, the 85-year-old pontiff, who has been looking frail, asked for forgiveness. I have to recognize my incapacity to adequately fulfill the ministry entrusted to me, he told a gathering of cardinals in Latin, saying his advanced age forced the decision. Just hours later, these images circulated around the world. These are unusual times for the Vatican. The last time a pope abdicated under similar circumstances was more than 700 years ago, experts say, Celestine V. Pontiffs have been reluctant to leave, so they don't send mixed messages or contradict the new pope. There's no role for an ex-pope. In the last few hours, the pope's brother spoke. It's possible the new pope will ask for his advice, but you notice that the aging process impacts body and soul, and he thinks that a younger person is needed to deal with today's problems. Although there's no evidence to suggest a motive other than old age, the Pope's unusual departure has left some wondering. Could be deeper than what we've been uh, told at the moment. Pope Benedict will eventually move to a cloistered monastery in the Vatican, officials say, praying and reflecting. Very low profile. Italians say his age and the weight of scandals, especially revelations of sexual abuse by priests, may have gotten to the scholarly pontiff. Bets are already being placed on who will lead the more than one billion Roman Catholics when the Pope steps down at the end of the month. The Pope will not take place in the uh, conclave to choose his successor. Vatican officials hope a new Pope will be in place by Easter, Matt. Hi, uh, Richard Engel in Vatican City this morning. Richard, thank you very much. Father Robert Barron is the rector of the Mundelein Cemetery in Chicago and an NBC analyst. Father Barron, it's nice to see you. Good morning. Thank you, Matt. Good to be with you. Before we talk about some possible candidates, let's talk about the criteria. What are the Cardinals going to be looking for in a candidate when they head into the conclave? You know, I think especially now, they're looking for an evangelist. The primary task of the successor of Peter is to announce that Jesus is risen from the dead, the basic good news of the faith. Now, under that rubric, then you look at theological acumen, you look at communication skill, you look at knowledge of languages, especially, I think, after John Paul II, it's now taken for granted the Pope should be the master of many languages. You also look for skill in organization. So the Pope manages a large uh, bureaucracy, the Roman Curia, right. and there's a great need, I think, for the reform of that Curia. So they're looking for that as well. But I go back primarily as someone who's an effective evangelizer in today's society. So let's go through some names. First off, there's Cardinal Francis Arinze. He's from Nigeria. What can you tell me about him? Well, he's a fascinating figure. I would frankly be a little surprised if he was uh, elected Pope, just given his age. Uh, pope Benedict was 78 when he was elected, and now is resigning because of, uh, of old age. And Cardinal Arinze is already 80. Um, having said that, he's a very prominent, important figure. Right. He's a bit of a television personality, you know, especially in the English-speaking world. He's become well-known, very articulate, a uh, charming, uh, funny man. He was also involved in the um, interreligious dialogue for many years, which would make him an attractive uh, figure in many ways. Let's stay in Africa. And Cardinal Peter Turkson is getting a lot of attention. He's 64, so age not an yeah. issue there. He, what do you he, think his chances are? Well, I'd say they're they're fairly good. Again, a very impressive uh, figure. Educated uh, a bit in this country, so he speaks uh, perfect English. Has a sense of uh, of the international church. He's also the uh, head of the Council for Peace and Justice. So very involved in economic and political issues would lean probably a bit left, at least in terms of, uh, you know, the mainstream view of economics and politics. Uh, but an attractive figure, many are saying, why not a, a pope from the third world? And he'd be indeed a very strong contender if that's a, a, 
the focus. One name I'm hearing a lot over the last 24 hours, Father, is Mark Willett. He's from Canada. He's also the, uh, he leads the Congregation of Bishops, which yeah. is a powerful position. Does that put him in, in any kind of position of advantage? Well, he's a very impressive figure. I happened to uh, be with him about five weeks ago. There was a conference in Rome that I was part of, and he chaired it. And I watched him go effortlessly from French to Italian to Spanish to Portuguese to German. He has that extraordinary command of language. As you say, as head of the Congregation for Bishops, he would know most of the bishops around the world have a real sense of the international church. He was also a seminary rector in Colombia, so he has a sense of the Latin American church. He's an impressive figure indeed. And you know, a lot of Americans are sitting there thinking, what about one of our own? What about Cardinal Timothy Dolan from here in New York, who joined us on the set yesterday morning? What are the chances an American could be named Pope? I'd say they're slim. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Cardinal Dolan. I think he's the best evangelist, certainly in the English-speaking world today. Talk about someone that leads with a joyful announcement of the gospel. Um, he's also the president of the United States uh, Conference of Catholic Bishops. He's a man who's widely respected. I mean, who knows what the Holy Spirit's going to do? I think it's a it's a slim possibility that America would be elected simply because we're the you know the lone superpower in the world, and they're probably reluctant to give the leadership of the church to an American. Having said that, I mean he's a massively impressive figure, and right. if my first criteria is right, evangelization, he's uh, he's the man. Right. A lot to think about in the coming weeks, Father Baron. Always nice to see you. Thank you very much.